On today's World Insight, a resurgent Omicron variant and the U.S.'s diplomatic boycott of the Winter Games, the latest factors in China-U.S. ties, how do tensions between the world's biggest economies affect everyone else? We use the one specific term to describe the international relations and the world affairs. That is uh, unprecedented changes in 100 years. And the effect of COVID treatment a top priority for Chinese researchers. New developments with China's COVID treatment pills. Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. In the early days of 2022, the world is still dealing with a resurgent pandemic as the Omicron variant spreads in many countries. China has taken on both internal and external challenges, disease control, economic recovery, and geopolitical tensions, to name a few. As the 20th Party Congress to open later in the year, what does China have in mind about its relations with the world? Meanwhile, a tough nut to crack. China-U.S. relations are always full of twists and turns. In November, Chinese President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Joe Biden met virtually. They both agreed to build on common sense guardrails to prevent ties from totally unraveling. But it takes two to tangle. What are the best and the worst scenarios? What's in store for China this year? Yuan Peng, the president of China Institutes of Contemporary International Relations, shared his thoughts in an interview with me. Professor Yuan, what a pleasure to see you once again. Mm, me too. I've been reading intensively of the annual report your institute put out every year on the security studies and also on the strategic outlook of next year. Tell me more about when you talk about the moving factors in terms of important elements of a security and strategy, what are you referring to? We use the one specific term to describe the international relations and the world affairs. That is uh, unprecedented changes in 100 years. This is a relatively uh, uh, long-term uh, observation. In 2021 in particular, I, I think the the biggest uh, variable still the pandemic. A uh, year ago, many uh, scientists predicted that uh, uh, the pandemic will soon pass. However, the end of this year, Omicron happened in South Africa and then all over the world. So it seems still too optimistic to see the end of the pandemic. So without the resolution, uh, follow the resolution of the uh, deal with the uh, pandemic. How can we expect a normal life? How can we expect the recovery of the economy? Today, the big problem is that U.S. and China relations still in a very intense you know, competition. So the world uh, uh, WHO still not that uh, you know, strong to lead. So today we really call for the world cooperation among major powers. Mm. Without the major power cooperation, the pandemic cannot be overcome. Since you talk about China-U.S. relations, uh, Professor Yuan, you've been an expert uh, researching about that subject for decades. Now, uh, how, how do you see the U.S. Uh, approaches Earlier, there was uh, Make America Great Again. That was of the Trump administration. Now it's made, uh, Build Back Better. That's of the Biden administration. But exactly how is the subject of China fit into the overall U.S. policies and analysis of itself? Yeah, America now two focuses. Domestically, focus on uh, build a better America, make America great again. That is so many uh, laws being passed in infrastructure, rescue the American economy, and, and so on and on. And Joe Biden is working on this. And uh, in foreign affairs, that is the one focus. That is China. That's why America now uh, draw its forces from Afghanistan, from Middle East, and uh, focusing on uh, Indo-Pacific. 
Uh, so China-focused uh, foreign policy now is the new American's uh, foreign policy uh, direction. So those two focuses, in some sense, is a self-contradiction. Because um, American's uh, economic, uh, the, the real hope lies in US and China cooperation rather than competition. So if you view China as a competitor, uh, enemy, so how can you expect your own economy being recovery? So how to overcome this self-contradiction, uh, I think uh, pose a very big challenge to American strategists and uh, officials. So that's why President Xi you know, said that we need mutual respect, we need peaceful coexistence and win-win cooperation. I think uh, this is the real solution of U.S. and China relations. But today, uh, unfortunately, America <laughs> still view U.S.-China a competition. Mm -hmm. So if we are competition, you know, becoming a focus of American China policy, I think it's a wrong direction. But if the U.S. insists on doing that, or in real terms have been and will be continuously doing that, then what is going to be China's strategy? This is also going to be a catch-22 situation for China, one would argue, Professor Yuan, because in terms of technology cooperation, in terms of uh, uh, global policies, China also needs to have the support of the U.S., not to mention many other countries. So how do you see this catch-22 situation for China as well? We have to prepare the uh, two scenarios. And uh, in policy regard, we have, uh, have to two-hands policy. On the one hand, we pursue a better future of U.S. and China relations, that is a peaceful coexistence and win-win cooperation. But this is our hope. It needs to be echoed by American officials and strategists. So then we have to prepare for the worst scenario, that is a new Cold War, even hot, hot war in some specific areas because uh, we see very dangerous directions. I did read in your report and the analysis you made in it about not just China and United States, but also many other new factors. For example, uh, Mika, uh, in a way, the emerging uh, economies that are uh, becoming ever more influential. Uh, that is generally one of those main examples. So, uh, how do you see countries reading their opportunities and challenges when there are dramatic changes going on in the world? Uh, what do you see as the logic in their choices? Because today, U.S. and China in a very intense competition situation, number one and number two are struggling. And uh, Russia and the uh, European Union is, uh, is uh, working on to find a new direction. So number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all those major powers are busy for their new direction. So what the other countries, what, what they look for? So they have to look for the answer by themselves. That's why we see some new forces are emerging. For example, the MICTA under uh, G20, mm. Mexico, Indonesia, Korea, South Korea, Turkey, and uh, Australia. Those five countries working together. So it's not belongs to traditional G20, uh, G7 or uh, BRICS. They find their own solutions. Well, another thing is that uh, uh, ASEAN countries, mm. they find that uh, they have to working on by themselves rather than rely on the major powers. Also, we see Turkey is now leading the so-called uh, Turkism uh, uh, state organizations. So Turkey is united to several uh, mid, uh, Central Asian countries. They want to reunite it together to find uh, their own direction. So if, we, if that's the new cases, then I think it's very dangerous because uh, major powers are competing among each other, and the African and the some areas is not in the focus of the world of geopoliticals. They are very bad uh, economic situation and the pandemic. Then those middle powers like t Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Indonesia, they're working on their own agenda. So what's the, the world orders look like? 
this is very dangerous rather than just big power competition. Mm. Another point, many suggest it has already been dramatic changes taking place in the study of politics and geopolitics, from geopolitics to technology politics. And we've been hearing from your annual conference this time, so many experts from so many different aspects talking about how technology is really transforming the realities. Now, Professor Yuan, I know you and your colleagues have been doing strategic studies for years and putting out reports every year. How do you see the speed of technology transforming the overall picture? Major powers not only uh, compete in geopolitical area, but more focus on the scientific areas because uh, those countries who can seize the opportunity to develop itself to catching up this trend of a scientific revolution, then they will be the fellow winner. And uh, today, uh, this is something very brand new, mm. including the warfare uh, scenario, including uh, big power competition. So the problem is that uh, the, all the powers should work in together mm. on this new revolution, rather than using this revolution to compete in geopolitical areas. And does China also have two scenarios using your earlier logic? I think so, because uh, the production chain and uh, now is uh, broken by some uh, artificial you know, political realities by some American you know, politicians. So what should we do? On one hand, we, we need to innovation by ourselves, scientifically. And on the other hand, we're still working on to make the globalization a real uh, world. So we have the two-hands policy, I think. How do you see the speed of change, but at the same time, the uh, efficiency of the solutions, if there are any? How do you see the relationship between patience and urgency, so to speak, in terms of what we are facing today, China particularly? Yeah, this is very, very key words to observe in today's world. In terms of a uh, fourth scientific revolution, that is uh, speed, then it's a very big urgency. Because without catching up this tr trend, you will be the loser. 10 years later, you can see this fact. Maybe but, even sooner. Yeah, but if you put everything in the unprecedented changes in 100 years, that is a long-term you know, trend you should be very patient. So how to balance patience and uh, urgency? How to balance development and uh, security? I think is a common task, not only by China, for China, but also for all over the world. So those countries who can make this more balanced, they will be the, the winner five years or 10 years later. Uh, 2022 going to be a big year for China, for example. The Winter Olympics is a big event for Beijing. Uh, then you will also see the 20th Chinese Communist Party Congress, which is going to be an important time in terms of transition. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the world, government changes, personnel changes as well. Many people become very nervous. What about for you? Yes, yeah, so next year is uh, election year, I think. In China, we have a 20th Party's Congress, which is a very big political event. In the American side, American side, we have a, we will see the midterm election. This election is not really a midterm, because it, it will decide the future you know, political picture of Americans' uh, long-term implication. Mm. Decides if uh, Donald Trump can be back in 2024 even will decide the future of American hegemon in the next 10 or 20 years. So it's not just a midterm election, it's a real, it's a real election. And also uh, in other, many other countries, we, have, uh, we will see some key elections. For example, Iraq, South Korea in uh, March, and in April we will see France election. And in May, we will see uh, Philippines presidential election. All those elections relevant to, not only to Chinese national security and development,
but also related to the ASEANs, to European, and even the, the whole world. But uh, on the one hand, we should uh, really follow on those elections to see what's going on on its uh, future policies change. But on the other hand, we should be patient because all those elections cannot uh, just because of an election to change the whole trend. That is unprecedented changes of 100 years. Mm. The, the really decisive uh, factors still scientific revolution, globalization, uh, big power relations. Those very fixed factors cannot change it by several uh, elections. Last but not least, uh, Professor Yuan, um, when the world is experiencing dramatic changes, a lot of people are curious about where we are going, but also a lot of people are becoming ever more helpless. Uh, they throw up their hands in the air and say, you know, whatever, because I could do nothing. I cannot decide on anything. So, Professor Yuan, for common folks who are watching the world go around them in such a dramatic way, what is your advice? My advice is that Tangping, uh, lying flat, is not a good idea for for the solution of the current uh, you know situation. We still need to be very positive because uh, we are living in the scientific revolution. Scientific re revolution provides lots of new opportunities. And, uh, and secondly, even if we have some big power competition, but uh, big powers today are more sober in viewing the bilateral relations and the whole, whole world. And most importantly, and uh, the new generations of the people in all countries, they are living in the same age, same world, for 20 years at least. So this will get rid of the, the old pet, uh, paradigm of a Cold War kind of thinking. So younger generation, 20s, 30s, even 40s, they are living the same world. They are different from those 50s, 60s, 70s. I think uh, this is the hope. So I think the world is still full of hope. Professor Yuan Peng, on that note, thank you so much, and Happy New Year to you. You too. Thank you. Appreciate it, sir.